Boy, I'm so happy you all come here for our DebConf 18 Diversity Forum. We are very serious about diversity here at DebConf and even more serious here in Taiwan. You know what? Some people tried to put us in some side room, but we're not having it. So we got all the broadcasts of every room because diversity is so important for us this time. We're not going to be uh, defeated by any other DebConf for diversity. So I personally invited I'm a cat to lead off our diversity forum. Hello, everybody. Thank you. And actually, this is kind of surprise since I thought it would be full of Chinese, full of Taiwanese here. But I thought, <laughs> so I was planning uh, about a, a Chinese panel. But well, it, it, it seems the situation is different. So, but actually, but yeah, our speakers are very powerful, so they can handle it. So then, they will come in to the to the diversity panel. I'm Ima K. I pass work for work with the uh, women in. FOASS for since 2010, and I've been organizing several panels talking about diversity and we, and gender gap, and and this year I have joined the joined the Wikimedia Diversity Working Group. So I'm very glad that I, glad that Jidani came to came to me and said that well if we can organize it this panel and yeah we did it, and I'm also very ha happy that I can we can enjoy and we in invites these speakers and they have different and they have their specialties in their area. And first our first speaker would be um, Asuka. Asuka is from the Migrant he's a chief editor of Migrant Power magazine. And he is and as as our in Taiwan migrant workers is a very important issue and there are there are ten there are ten uh, hundreds of thousands of migrant workers in Taiwan, but you actually you can very little see them in all kinds of different places. So I, I I would like to see more different more of migrant workers also in the conference in community and in everywhere else. And also the second speaker will be and Abby Abby is from the Abby is from the um, Transgender, transgender activist organization in Taiwan, and he's also a she's also a soft, uh, security engineer, and she will share her point of view on the difficulties and situation of transgender in the FOSS. And the third one, Johnny, and Johnny, we have uh, Johnny is is my is one of my best friend, and she she has been working with me on Pilates Taiwan, and when we started Pilates Taiwan, and she's now. Uh, a lead in girl in tech, yeah. And the fourth one, I think, and also Johnny will share more, us more on the uh, gender gap issue. And the fourth one, I think many people here already know her. Is she and Ronda, and Ronda is working in Debian for many years, and also she is now currently working for to organize a diversity team, and she will share us on her the prop the problems and the progress she's work, currently working on and she's facing here. And so since we have little time here, so each, person, each speaker will have 10 minutes. And yeah, I hope we still have some QA time, but I don't know. And yeah, for diversity issue, I think the, mm, the oh, for diversity issue, I think Currently, I, I, I have talked to Longda before this conference, and I found that we, we currently have a call of conduct, and we have three, but, but I, I don't see more than this. So I was thinking about if we can do some, something more than the call of conduct, we can, if besides a passive call of conduct, what can we do to invite more people into this, commu into this community? What, should, what, what, what more projects, what more, and uh, ways, what things that we can do to invite more people. So, and Asuka, can you share about your point of view in the migrant workers? Hello, good morning, everybody. My name is Asuka Lee, and actually my occupation is very special. I am a journalist. 
But I think everybody here, maybe you are engineer or hacker, but uh, I'm the editor in chief and the founder of an independent media in Taiwan. And it's named Migrants Park. It's the first independent media which focus on the migrant people community. Migrant people including migrant worker and uh, foreign spouses. And today I hear, I want to share everybody about my my point of view about uh, migrant people, their disadvantage in information. Because I think everybody here, we are really good in information, good in using PC, Mac, or programming, or do something. But the migrant people group, they are very weak in this kind of part. So this, today I want to introduce the disadvantage in information of migrant worker group. And let me introduce the migrant people uh, status of Taiwan. The total population of migrant worker is 700,000. And every year is increased in 20,000 to 30,000. So uh, the total population is increasing and increasing. And I think one day the population will be over than one, one, uh, if I want to so. oh, yeah. one million people. The, and the migrant worker, they are from four Southeast Asia country, Vietnam, Indonesia, Philippines and Thailand, and except Filipino people, the other migrant worker from Vietnam, Indonesia, and uh, Thailand, uh, they cannot speak English well. They can only say their mother language. So it's really difficult for them to communicate with local people. And migrant worker, their occupation, uh, mainly are factory worker, fisherman, domestic caretaker, and uh, maid. And the last two kind of occupation, domestic worker and a domestic maid, it's very, very difficult for them to have a day off. Uh, most of them only have one day off per month, even one day off every two months. So they are, have a really few free day, free time, themselves. And uh, most people of them, uh, they don't have personal computer. Right. Most of them are only have a cell phone. So they are really rely on their own cell phone, smartphone. And uh, about the disadvantage in information, because the uh, migrant people, migrant worker, oh, they are really rely on their smartphone. So they can only use three kind of app, like Facebook, Line, or KakaoTalk, or BTalk, and other app, they don't know. So even they can't use like Microsoft Word, or Excel, or email. Because sometimes I communicate with them. Maybe I will ask them, can you email something to me? They ask me, sir, what is email? They don't know, <laughs> they don't know what is email. So if they want to send me some picture, always use a Facebook, a Facebook message or line. And uh, because I, uh, uh, before I said uh, they have really few day off. So it's really hard for them to go outside to shopping. Uh, most of the time, they need to stay in their employer's house. So they only can do the shopping on Facebook. So they really like to buy the materials, buy the products in Facebook group or Facebook page. But uh, 
Sometimes they will buy the fake product, or they will meet the internet fraud. Uh, but, no, but nobody tell them it's dangerous because uh, they are separate from the society. And about uh, the uh, e commerce. E commerce. Okay, so uh, because the population is of migrant people is more than 700,000, so, so some company in Taiwan, they want to develop the electronic. Um, <laughs> e-commerce. E so like so some local company they want to deliver the e-commerce to migrant people. But really difficult to push because uh, based on the language barrier and uh, discrimination, the migrant worker they are really hard to have a bank account in Taiwan. Uh, because uh, I say uh, some of most of them cannot speak English and Chinese, so they are really hard to have a bank account. Even they go to the bank, the bank uh, servant uh, is really hard to communicate with the migrant people. So they they are really they are difficult to have a ATM or ATM card or a credit card. So uh, most of the time they need to buy things by cash. So we know uh, the people, all of the migrant workers, they come to Taiwan is want to earn money to send back to their family in their hometown. But uh, they have no ATM card or credit card. So if they want to remit the money, they need to bring a bunch of cash and go to the remittance center and uh, and to uh, to send back to their home. So uh, so I think some some local company they want to develop a business economic e-commerce, but uh, until now, no local company successfully to push e-commerce to migrant worker group. And uh, maybe some of you will think we can teach them about, uh, we can educate them in information, but it re it's also difficult because the migrant workers uh, they have a language barrier and a very few day off. And sometimes the limitation from their employer is really important. Uh, import, in, uh, employer uh, limit, limit their limit their free day in Taiwan. And uh, because uh, even the people have the free times in Taiwan. They are, uh, they like to learn Chinese first because if they learn Chinese, uh, one day when they go back to their home, they can find a better job. So they are willing to learn language first. So not very interesting in information education. And uh, even their, uh, job. Uh, their job is not stable because the caretaker, they take care of all the old people, but maybe the old people will die or pass away. So if the old people pass away, the caretaker need to go home. So uh, it's not stable of their job. And finally, uh, if they receive the education, but like uh, I said before, they have no personal computer to use, to practice, because uh, most of them only have a mobile phone, cell phone. 
So it's really difficult to teach the migrant worker in information. Okay, so this is my share. Sorry for my poor English. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks for Ashoka to share the, the status of the current mig migrant workers in Taiwan. And I, I would like to, I would like, really like to see that we can invite more invite them into this community. And yeah, since actually they are part, they are a large part, actually the, and, and Abby, could you please? Eh? Could you please share, share us about the difficulties that, be, that have been happening on the transgender, the transgender community? Since actually, this actually, if somebody has still remember this, this panel was in the beginning was a transgender journal and then become a gender channel and become the diversity channel. And I'm very glad that we can cover more issues. Okay. I'm very glad that we can cover more issue here and yeah. But I will also like to but I would also like to bring this issue of transgender women and their problem into discussion and Hi, my name is Abby, and I'm a security engineer, and I previously working in blockchain industry. And I also, I, for now, I, I almost working, I work for, sounds, some, sounds like an independent security con contractor. So, so people hire me to, like, to invest into the company, so the system to find out if they have any leaks so any yeah you know the hackers will do and yeah and uh, i can say i'm a white hat okay so for, for personally i am a transgender woman which is a very small portion of this today uh, we have only a handful of people who are transgender women today in this conference and when we talk about gender, we always talk about what? The sex in the pants, or in the, under the dress, or in the inside the body, or under behavior. Which kind? Or in our head? What kind? We don't know. But we do know is our, we humans like to categorize things. Like Short, tall people, handsome, ugly, and rich guy, poor guy. Because we saw different people, we know them, and um, our brain need to understand them, so we categorize them into different, we, we can say, um, manifestos, we say the basket, baskets in your brains. We call it categorized. So we can simplify the thing. Or we, we, or in other terms, we can say laboring, laboring things. But in the end, we figured out we actually in human beings, we don't have any label because each one is unique. You are professional in coding. You are professional in security. And you are special in DevOps and so, so on, so on. So it, everyone is unique. We are all humans. Although maybe in the, in the I see in, we, our audience come from all, like all last 50 years.
。OK， no problem。我知道，因为这边这边是我的那个。We all say men and women have different kind of brain, but it turns out in the latest research, every brain is different. You you might like taste sweet, sweet taste. Sour taste or any taste, you, you may look lovely. You may you may look look stronger or you can like whatever you like. These are all designed by genes, and no two people are with the same gene. For the gender, we are all under history, or we are on the tipping point of the history. Because the, this tipping point is just like the beginning of the, I can say, maybe some people will know, the black woman movement in, in the US. Because of the history, we, di we, di we don't know li this. We, we, we only know, or we learn from the education, we only know men and a woman. And for the other people, like maybe for ourselves, maybe let's, let's play a small game. How many people think, think I am a man? Just raise your hand. No problem, that's fine. And how many people think I'm a woman? Raise your hand, please. Thank you so much. And how many people think I am not non -livable? That's great. And in our brain, in the traditional concept idea, man is in the box, woman in another box, and others in another box. The other box is we call non non binary binary. Binary, sorry, non-binary. And we also call it the freaks, okay. Why we call it freaks? Because we don't know who you are. Why you are coming here, why you are just like, you, are talk, you talk like a man and you're just like, woman. what the hell, what's going on with you? Let's talk about history. There's a story maybe you can remember. Once upon a time, there's a, Scientists say the Earth is an orbit, and he was executed before his established, which called Del Invento Universal Divento. He he claimed sun is sun is the center of our galaxy, and he also claimed a human is not the only human beings in the universe. This claim is dangerous violating the church, the religions in the 16th century. So he turned out to be the sentenced to fire to death. Okay, now we know the earth is an orbit. And this is a common sense. But we always fall into our common sense in our area, in our thoughts, in our daily life, in our experience. And through these all things, and we see, we, we see all things, we, maybe we, sometimes we can see some dangerous, thing, dangerous things. We need to immediately, immediately. This is time we, I, I, will, I, will, I will show you uh, this. I don't know if you ever see this movie. It's called it, as men First Class. And this is the collaboration with human beings and the X-Men. They want to try to avoid a conflict between the hu uh, American and Cuba. And and because the X-Men use their superpower to overpower the human's weapons, so the human becomes afraid of them and to stop it and turn 
their weapons to the X-Men. And that's what, where the story begins. In the, in the transgender world, for, for even for myself, we often seen as freaks. Although we are just humans, we get, uh, get out in the morning and brush our teeth and go to work and get out of bed at night and yeah. We all want to work together, we want to live, live together, we want to coding together, we want to program, do, do the program together, we want to learn the, how to code together. But sometimes we are, maybe you can say, frightened, be frightened for, from some people. So it becomes some transgender people may not quite trust humans, so they become, you may say, a bit of bit an enemy. But for me, myself, my empathy is still there. I, today I'm standing here to just let you see the transgender people is not the, like Spider-Man or something with special powers or whatever it is. We're just ordinary people. And that's what we, talk, we, we will talk about human. Human is full of curiosity. When we, when we look at the night sky, we saw the moon and the sky, we don't know what they come from. Our ancestors, our ancestors once they told us, when you see the shooting star, it symbolizes the bad things will happen. But we all know this is just the star cross the atmosphere. Carl Sagan once said, we are all born in curiosity. Why we just keep this curiosity to all things, not only for computers, Debian, and community, and we reach out to all the things we can, and we reach out to all the peoples we, we are working with. Maybe we your, your colleague, maybe your neighbor who are a transgender person, reach out to him, to her, as, as questions. Don't be afraid because when you're afraid, you cannot take a step. You, can al you will always un un understand. Facing the unknown, we will be afraid. That's what we humans do. So we just because we are the community, we will go and go, go, go. Go to the unknown, go to the unknown. This is what a community will do. And you can Google a lot of things about transgender online, but you maybe, maybe I am the first transgender person you ever seen in front of your eye. But I am glad I am the first one. But I, I encourage you to see more people, more transgender people, and more even other genders, genders, communities around you. And that's all for my speech. Thank you all. Thank you for thank you for thank you for Abby sharing about the transgender issue. Actually, I I have been working on bringing the transgender women's problem, the issue into the 
the general women's issue, try to try to bring it into many different situations. For example, our local feminist group and our also in where I'm working, currently working with the Wikimedia, Wiki Women. And I think it's quite, actually this is quite, not, not so new, not so new actually, but many people still have difficulties since even if many, many, many of them may know about trans, something about transgender women, but what we are actually facing, for example, when we are, when we are, I've, when you are peeing, we, 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 we are afraid of police. <laughs> even if just something that simple like to go to toilet, we are facing, we are kind of in the fear of police arrest or even, or for the past two years I've been fighting for the right to to swim. And you know and many people may they know that in many many gym, G Y M doesn't welcome transgender women. So yeah. So I I hope that we can have more understand. And then next will be thank you. And yes, and Johnny will share us about her experience on women on the our major issue, the diver, the major issue in diversity, the gender gap. And Johnny will be sharing on this. Okay. Hi, good morning everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very happy to be here. And today I will uh, represent the two uh, women who call Taipei lead to share with you guys about um, like what we've done in education, in coding education, in the school and out of school. And yeah, I think it's a very good topic today. We can, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, it's better? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So um, actually, I didn't know I need to use English, so my slides in in Chinese. But I will share you guys in English, and try my best. Okay. So um, so have you everyone heard about women who call in your city or country? Can you raise your hand? Okay, nice. And did you join any like event in women who call type uh, in women who call in your country before? Okay, good. So yeah, so we are Women Who Call Taipei, and I'm Joanie, and Jane is our city director. Uh, and Women Who Call Taipei actually is, uh, come from 2016, and we established in Taipei. And now we try to uh, encourage more female to set step into the coding area. And now we have over 800 people, 800 female or male, joining our event before. And actually, um, we use different ways to encourage a female to start coding. And one of our, um, we, we, li we like the offline like meeting, so not just the online. And uh, we host a different like topic of uh, uh, event. So first one is like we use the like workshop or study group. And we, this one is uh, we host in one of the American like uh, called BNY uh, Malone uh, Bank and we cooperate with them to use their uh, office and that we can study a book to help like different like trans, um, trans, change their career path to technology field so we can tell them how to prepare the interview and also we have some uh, engineer in that area and can share with us how to prepare your interview. And the second one is uh, we are very happy that this year we are the code.org uh, partner, international partner in Taiwan. So that we can uh, do more to the uh, younger age people to start coding. Yeah. So we we have already did lots of uh, like uh, um, hour of code, and I think uh, lots of people probably 
have ever tried or your kids have ever tried to uh, writing code in uh, on on the website called code.org. So they provide a bunch of uh, different materials to uh, teach kids how to code and use the Blockly use the Blockly uh, based uh, programming languages to help kids to understand the logic of coding. And yeah, so we go into the schools and our volunteers, they also spend their time, including me, we go into like a Xinbei uh, elementary school and teach the teacher how to teach coding in the class. And we also cooperate with, uh, with some, um, not only the tech company, we also cooperate with them to tell them, probably their employees, they really want to uh, start coding or know more about what the engineer is doing. So we cooperate with them to teach them the hour of code. <laughs> so not for the children, <laughs> we al also teach the, the adult. And we also go into like Dell Taiwan. So you can see like the picture we show um, is all about the female. So uh, it's really interesting that like, the uh, parents, they usually want to know more about, uh, about coding nowadays. And because next year in Taiwan, we also will start our first uh, year, uh, I think, yeah, first year to uh, include the computer science as a main subject in junior high school and senior high school. So that's the reason why more and more people, they care about this topic issue in today. Yeah. And the second thing I want to share is uh, because I was an engineer before, but two years ago, I decided to change my career path to education. So I just uh, combined the technology background and the education passion and now going to the schools. So we just discover if you want to encourage more people start coding, the best way is you teach the kids. <laughs> yeah, if the kids can, um, can touch the technology or coding earlier, which means when they decided to like ch uh, choose their um, major or choose their job, they can have more like imagination. So, yeah. So um, two years ago, uh, when I tried, when I first decided to go to the education area, I searched for like in search different like position in Taiwan, and finally I decided to just apply for a job in a school. So I went to Yilan. Yeah, Yilan is the north of Taiwan. We w I went to Yilan, Zhaoxi and become their uh, computer teacher. And this year, I just graduated with the students, <laughs> yeah. So I, I went there just like a normal class. I, every, every week, I spend a whole day and teach over 100, yeah, 100 students. Uh, they are eighth grades, and, and now it's ninth grades. So I teach two years there, and just uh, just to uh, um, practice or gain my experience in the school. And I also realized that the kids in the school, they actually, they don't need to, you don't need to teach them become, you don't need to uh, expect them to become a very professional, like coder or programmer. You just need to give them the different, like technology um, to, to uh, help them to gain some imagination. And so we did different like topic, like we, we teach them a basic of HTML and CSS. And we also teach them like how to, if, if you want to uh, resolve a big problem, what's the first step? So probably you need to learn how to, how to you know, create a mind map. Yeah, and we also, um, try to cooperate with, uh, we also bring some outsource to, uh, like s uh, some resource to like Google Cardboard. They, we, we, uh, we, get, uh, we got over 200 Cardboard and we just uh, make the students to try to uh, 
to uh, make them. And the interesting is you can try a different way to teach the kids. So like a Google Cardboard, I didn't tell them how to do that step by step. Instead, we ask them to search on the internet, to, to probably search on the YouTube, to see, to watch the video, and then try to, try to make their own one. And we use also teach them the Python. So you can see, because we don't have much time, in Taiwan we only have like in junior high, every week the students only have 45 minutes uh, in, in, in computer, science, computer class. So we, we didn't have much time. So that's why we just uh, you know, teach them based on the projects. Yeah. So uh, the consequence is there is one student uh, he made a, an ape by using like ape inventor and then try to make an ape to teach the uh, the grandma in Kaohsiung how to use the mobile phone. Yeah. So so um the yeah. So uh the most important thing is I also uh discover that in this age the female, the girls usually <laughs> learn well than the male. <laughs> yeah. Probably it's because uh yeah, girls are more concentrated on the class. <laughs> and we also have the club class. So we use, like, teach them the Arduino. Club class is led by another volunteer and make the, the, the cars, the wheel cars. And every kid in the class are learning very happy. Yeah, we also have the different, like, projects in the school. And so what I really want to share is, um, First thing is we probably based on Taipei, based, based in Taipei, but uh, we worked very hard to make more people to start uh, knowing what uh, we are doing and uh, trying to reduce the barriers. So people probably will feel, wow, coding is, is very difficult. But uh, actually, when we try to use the very simple way, like out of code, we can tell them, hey, it's not, it's not, it's not difficult. It's very easy. Can, you can start it. Yeah. So this, this year, I think we try to uh, work out of Taipei and like Xinzhu, Yilan, and we want to, you know, encourage more people out of Taipei, not only, you know, in Taipei. And we also have a pair programming. The pair programming is like a one on one, and you can just uh, code by different. Uh, you can you can have a one mentor to help you, and yeah. So this one is our uh, our plan in this year. We want to have a local code coding club, but now we are really need a, like a sponsorship and the fund volunteers can help us to to uh, start a local coding club. Yeah. So if anyone in here you have uh, any resource or you have time can support us uh, so feel free to contact me yeah so we also have a uh, to, to cooperate with like bookstore in taiwan to bring like uh, because i think uh, reading ability is very important on coding so that's why i <laughs> i just uh, use this one yeah just host this event yeah so yeah so because i don't have ma uh, many time so probably later we can uh, interact more okay so thank you, everyone. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, Johnny. Hello. Wait. Hello. Hey. Thank you, Johnny, for sharing us. And actually, uh, yes, it's very important for to reduce the gender gap. It's very important from education. And yes, and sorry. And I hope that we have still have five more minutes. So, yeah, Johnny, and it's not Johnny. Uh, Ronda. Okay. Um, thanks for being here and for having me on the panel. Um, my name is Rhonda, my pronouns are she, 
and I'm with the Debian project since 2000 or even longer, but um, official Debian developer since 2000. Um, by 2004 and about, I realized that I'm trans and uh, that was also about the time when the Debian Women project was founded and uh, the reason for the Debian Pre Women project was to encourage uh, more women to participate within Debian to increase the visibility of the women we already have in Debian and to provide mentoring and also role models uh, there were two conferences held uh, one in Barcelona and one in Bucharest where all the speakers there were by, done by people who identify female and yeah um, the Debian Women project is still around um, then there's the second point uh, within the DEPCONF we have this diversity bursary um, which is was going around as a deer during DEPCON Heidelberg or maybe even a bit before um, for 2016 it was sort of a separate effort where people could roll up for diversity reasons and, and to increase the diversity of the people participating in the DEPCONF. Um, since last year it is an integrated part in the bursary process so when you register for the conference you have this special field where you can fill in um, diversity criteria which sort of um, allows you to get um, um, funding, f f travel sponsorship, food sponsorship uh, for the different diversity criteria which includes amongst others gender identity, uh, people from underrepresented countries, racial minorities or even age. And Two years ago in Cape Town, I was personally addressed by some people at the conference that it might be time to find a specific diversity chapter within Debian. We had one IRC session so far, um, but we have a dedicated IRC channel where we hang out and chat with each other and exchange different things that we stumble upon. Um, we had two sessions last year at the DEPCONF where we talked about in what direction we might, might want to go with the team and how we might want to represent it and um, there were some difficulties in my personal life which sort of didn't allow me to pursue it during the last year very much but I really want to have this diversity team founded um, we will have another session this this week look I'm, I'm not exactly sure I think it's on Tuesday but look it up in the schedule you will find it the idea behind the diversity team is to increase visibility and uh, within the Debian community because we actually are quite diverse already but it might not look like that on the outside uh, we have people from different uh, ethnic minor minorities, racial minorities different age groups different gender identities or sexual minorities whatever and it, it might not look like that on the outside so we really should work on, on creating visibility um, to make it not just being part of the code of conduct but also having it really visible and, and 
spread the word to the outside um, that we are very welcoming. Thanks. Thanks, and I wish we can have some QA, but I suppose our time is up. So, is this okay? I think the the Mr. Tang is waiting there. <laughs> okay, and if one one or two questions, any one or two questions, and also if if no if then uh, I I have a question for each one of you. So, I think I think. And I'm I'm very admire of what Rhonda has done in the past in the Debian community, but I still s can see the gap between the gender gap and also other communities gap. So, I a short question and in one minute or even thirty seconds be sure. Okay, so um, what do you think we should do besides to besides the code of conduct? to see more different faces. For example, to see more women here, to see more women, to see more, to see more transgender, to see more, for example, the different language people, Indian language come. What, what do you think, what should we do in, in addition to call of contact? And who won first? Um, I I recently read up about uh, this uh, uh, paper from a German uh, language uh, linguist and he spoke about uh, why we need a politically correct language to reduce, um, to, to equal out the levels of, of people participating in communication because there are much more downgrading words for minorities than for the majority, so to say, and on to have an equal level of communication between people, we really should work on, on, on the language level to weed out these uh, terms that even if, if they're sexist, racist, uh, ableist, there are so many different discrimination levels going on and we raise, have to raise the awareness what we do with, with language and how it uh, affects other people. Thank you. Thank you. I will interpret this as we need to have more clear, plan, clear plans and yeah. And Okay, so um, I think from my experience is uh, the face-to-face -face in interaction is the most uh, powerful things. Like today, I'm staying here, I can see everyone in this room, right? So um, I think if you want to change or you want to, you know, um, like the gender issue, you want to change the gender issue, you want to improve it, the face-to-face -face interaction is the most important. Because uh, people, you know, you talk to the people and you get some feedback from the people. And if you have a discussion, which means you have a ch chance, you have an opportunity can change the people's mind. Yeah. Thank you. Face to face is very important. And I see that many people are not watching her. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Abby and what is thing? Which steps should we take be taken to get more people? Actually, I think there are only two requirements we need to take, uh, two actions we need to take. One is we must have empathy to everyone because everyone is all of us. And the second is don't think you know everything because when you know more, you will know you know this. I don't know if you get it. You know more and you will know you know this. If you, if you know more, so you know that many more, many, many things you don't know. And there are the two
key points I want to take out. And I hope you just keep, keep in mind empathy and you don't know anything. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everybody's share. And and just some advertisement and Yongda is, is organizing a diversity team and we, we do really need more voices, more especially from different people. So please come join us and yeah, we maybe we will have a more, di more thorough discussion on, on our progress and our, what, can, what we can do here. Thank you.